Our sermon text for this morning is from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading from chapter 14, verses 15 through 17. Hear now the word of the Lord. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sermon title for this morning is The Spirit Among Us. The Spirit Among Us. Let's begin with prayer. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on each one of us, that we would feel your presence in our lives and recognize you among us, connecting us to one another and to you. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I was talking to a friend, a grandma, on the phone just two weeks ago. She told me she had just spent the last hour in her car, in her daughter's driveway, reading a story through her open window to her grandson, who is four. He sat in rapt attention on the porch step of his house. She told me he was wearing both shorts and long pants perhaps to keep himself warmer while he sat in rapt attention, wanting every moment to continue with his grandma, who he loves so much. Then this time of COVID, perhaps hearing a story from a grandma on a porch step who's located in her car is the best we can do in order to stay connected with one another. But it is something, the sound of a voice, a smile on a face, the love that we feel even when we can no longer hug a grandchild. The Spirit of God works like that. When Jesus began his long farewell speech to his disciples, the one that we hear a snippet of today, he promises the Spirit of God's love will come. Jesus will ascend to the right hand of the Father in heaven, we learn, but the Spirit will come and abide with us forever. And that is good news. Keep my commandments, Jesus tells them. Love God and love one another, and the Spirit of God will come and abide with you always. God abides among us through the power of love, through the Holy Spirit that never goes away. But how do we connect to that spirit? How do we feel God's love when we get so caught up in our everyday lives? We are busy, busy working from home, online learning with school, nonstop childcare. We forget about God sometimes and about the power of the Holy Spirit, even as it provides a palpable presence of love. Yet we still search for connectedness. We yearn for community. Church brings us back together, even when we are isolated at home. We can worship. We can pray. And for many of us who are more mobile and less vulnerable to the COVID-19 disease, church community means opportunities to love our neighbors through acts of service. This week, I was on a clergy call with all the churches in the Hudson River Presbytery that house food pantries or host feeding programs. I heard stories of how the pandemic is multiplying the number of people who are facing food insecurity and need help now. And these churches have been there for them. They adapted to the new rules of safe conduct, offering drive-by pickups and groceries pre-packed in bags. 
Several pastors said that what food pantries need most is not food donations, but rather cash donations to local food banks. These food banks are the supplier of food to the food pantries. The reason for this emphasis on cash contributions to food banks is that the food banks can acquire food at wholesale prices. Specifically, food banks can acquire food in the New York region at 16 cents a pound, no matter what the food is, meats or vegetables or canned goods. 16 cents a pound. So rather than contributing the food that you buy at the grocery store at higher retail prices, you can send your money directly to food banks that supply our regional food pantries. Feeding Westchester is one agency that can make these wholesale purchases. And another donor site that our sister churches recommend is called Adopt a Program under the Regional Food Bank of Northeast New York. Their website allows donors to focus funding on your choice of food bank in the region that can acquire food at wholesale prices to feed more people more economically. Neighboring pastors also told me stories of other gifts that congregants were making in this time of extreme need to their churches and communities. Some people gave away their economic relief check that they had received from the government, half to the church and half to the local food bank. Still others donated their dollars to the Presbyterian Disaster Agency. People were receiving help and at the same time, they were helping others. The Spirit is on the move through us to help our neighbors. It looks a lot like God's love on legs. Back in March, when the pandemic was new and our area was at the epicenter, with New Rochelle, the home of patient zero, we learned that the first known victim of COVID-19 was a man and his family who worship at Temple Young Israel in New Rochelle. In fact, they had attended a service there just days before the man became seriously ill. As we followed in the news, fear also began to spread throughout the community, first as the illness forced the closing of the synagogue, and then as the rabbi himself became ill with COVID-19. The governor soon created a containment zone around the synagogue and the homes of those early victims. Some of our own congregants live in that containment zone. It was a frightening time. But the careful containment worked, and eventually it was safe to end the containment zone restrictions, and the rest is history, except for something you may not know. At the same time as these events were in the news, members of our session shared their concerns with me about the welfare of our neighbors in New Rochelle. They wanted to do something to help, and specifically, they wanted to help the congregants of Temple Young Israel in order to help them feel less alone. So in early April, they reached out to their neighbors with love. They asked me to address a letter to the rabbi, and along with it, they sent a gift card of several hundred dollars from their own pockets to the Jewish congregation in New Rochelle. It was the Spirit of God at work in our people, inspired by love. And that was the end of it. Until last week, when we received a letter back from Rabbi Reuven Fink, he had been very ill with COVID-19, but when he recovered and found our letter in the mail, it took him by surprise and filled him with joy. He wrote, Dear Reverend Clameau in the Larchmont Avenue Church, how wonderful and magnificent it was to receive your letter. Our congregation was suffering so, with so many of our members in critical condition in many different hospitals throughout the metropolitan region. Some of our members died, and it seemed as if the world was caving in on us. And that was a terribly lonely feeling. We felt so isolated 
and alone. But when we received your beautiful letter filled with love and brotherhood, it gave us a sense that we were being lifted up by others. You brought us consolation. It was more than a mere gesture. The letter was filled with beautiful sentiments and good wishes. You were praying for us, and we believed that your prayers were being heard in heaven. You helped us in our time of need. I truly do not have adequate words to articulate what your reaching out to us meant. You punctuated your letter with a beautiful gift that was certainly unnecessary, yet you expressed your love for us by doing so. I hope that it was acceptable to you that we donated the money to Meals on Wheels of New Rochelle to help our neighbors who were suffering without the means to adequately feed their families. Again, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts and we pray that God in heaven has mercy on his children here on earth and removes this terrible scourge. We pray for that time when all God's children will be united in love and fellowship. That is precisely the love that you have heaped upon us. God bless you all. With much appreciation and affection, Rabbi Reuven Fink, Young Israel of New Rochelle. Friends, Jesus promised us that the Holy Spirit would come and abide with us forever. He was right. The Spirit came. Amen.